Hello. Hi, uh, my name is Dan Kuhn. I'm an independent Scientologist. I've uh, been an independent Scientologist, I guess, for several years, but not much has really happened until the last year. Uh, I got into Scientology in 1969. I joined the Sea Org in 1977, and I left at the end of 2003. That's sort of my basic uh, time track in, in, in the church, so to speak. Okay, uh, could you please uh, uh, tell a little more about how did you get in? Like, how did it happen? Sure, well I got interested in Scientology through my brother who was uh, at St. Hill in the 60s and he was on the clearing course and was clear number 88 and he got me and a couple of friends interested in it. About 1968, I was in school in Berkeley at the time and I uh, did my comm course, first comm course at two day you know, like one of these weekend comm courses. I did that in 1969. Uh, didn't get a whole lot out of it, to be honest. I was meditating at the time, and I was kind of going, wow, well, you know, I had to stop meditating for a couple days before I could, well, I could do the course. And then I went back to my meditation after that. But later that I went home for the summer and came back to school in the fall, and I got onto the uh, old HSDC, the HSDC, the Hubbard Center Dynamics course. And that was great, and I, I just... It just took off for me, and I just started having win after win after win, got some auditing, had a great time, and um, joined staff at the mission in Berkeley in 1971. I was there for about three years, and then I went down to L.A., did the clearing course, did the OT levels, audited at missions, um, Pasadena, um, did the briefing course in 1975 and 1976, went up to Lake Tahoe and worked at the mission up there. Um, came back to L.A. and in 1977 I got recruited for the Sea Org. LRH wanted to make some auditors for a qual div. He was forming up in uh, down by Indio, uh, the old uh, famous winter headquarters down there next to uh, the La Quinta Golf Course. So I joined the Sea Org and spent the next 27 years there. Uh, got fed up with the way things were going at the end of 2003 and left. And I've been out since and just living my life. Okay, thank you. And uh, when you said you got fed up with uh, things, uh, what did you mean? Well, um, I had many experiences in the Sea Org, many good experiences, many challenging experiences, many bad experiences. But what I noticed was a progression. Uh, when, when I first joined the Sea Org, LRH was there, he met with us. We made films together, we submitted uh, session tapes to him for critiques on our TRs, and life with, with him around was wonderful. And then he went off the lines a couple times, and then went off the lines for good in 1986. And at that point, uh, things still sort of progressed, and they were, they were going okay, but I would notice you know, things going wrong, and out points, and more stresses, and less, uh, it was certainly became a lot less fun as the years went on. By the time I left in 2003, it was uh, pretty unfun. It was uh, very much a sleep-deprived situation, a lot of uh, pressure, a lot of demands with no production, a lot of H-E-N-R, a lot of the stuff you read on the blogs uh, about uh, experience at the Int Base, I can attest that they're all extremely accurate. I lived through them, I observed them, um, I know people, the good friends of mine who are now out will attest to the same thing. And it just was not the Scientology that I joined in 1970 and in the 70s and 80s. So I decided I'd always have a, had a, um, a lifelong desire to paint and explore that side of my creativity. Never had a chance to really do that in the Sea Org. I did a little bit, but not what I really wanted to do. And I said, you know, this, this game is not going anywhere. Uh, a stuck flow per LRH never flows weaker, it only flows harder. And this stuck flow of what was going on up there was just flowing harder and harder and harder. And I decided I'm going to take some time and just explore this other side of my life and see if I like it, and I've never looked back. Okay. Um, when did you join the Free Zone? Did you? When did I? Uh, well, you know, I've become aware of the free zone since I've been out, and I wouldn't say that I'm so much a member of the free zone as I'm just an independent Scientologist. I'm a Scientologist, 
I've been a Scientologist for many, many years. I was a part of the church for many years. I was a part of the Sea Org for many years. But those are organizational concepts that are junior to the fact of there's Scientology, which is a philosophy and a technology. And that's what I'm still part of. And I'll never not be part of that. I'm just not part of any particular organization. I guess if you had to say, if I had to categorize myself in any way, I'd say I'm an independent Scientologist. All right. Okay, uh, I, I have another question. <clears throat> you said uh, that you are still Scientologist, but you are not just a Scientologist. You are very well, highly trained Scientologist, right? And do you help others using Scientology technology? Not just philosophy, technology? Well, my, my activities today are mainly involved in hopefully bringing about some kind of reform to organizational Scientology. It's, to me, it's gone way off the rails. Things are being done that are not per the way LRH did things, and I experienced the way LRH did things, and what's happening now in the church is just not, it's just not LRH. So I, I'm more interested right now in bringing about uh, some kind of reform that, that goes, that, that, that anything that'll sort of push towards that, I'm, I'm definitely supportive of. My, um, my experiences in the Sea Org, I spent about half the time of the 27 years in the compilations area, so I'm very familiar with the tech lines and the technical issues. Uh, I com did most of the work on compiling the Golden Age of Tech, and some people disagree with that heavily. Other people think it's the fact that an auditor should be able to do his drills properly is fine, but the misadministration of it is what really screwed it up. And I tend to sort of side with those people that it's 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 good that an auditor should be able to assess an L1C and not flub the commands, and just so he can get a, a proper read and the PC can stay in session, and not be distracted by the auditor. Um, on the other hand, I think that a lot of this stuff was misadministered, and that's what's given it a bad name, in my opinion. Um, I'm interested in helping people apply Scientology wherever they are. I don't care if they're in the church or out of the church or in the free zone or just as independents or whatever. Um, Scientology is the senior datum, and that's, that's what I'm interested in, in promoting and ensuring it uh, is always there for us. And I do think the church needs to be drastically reformed because it's completely off the rails right now. I see. Okay, so people ask me sometimes whether you can actually do Scientology outside of the, yeah. the, the, uh, the, you know, the umbrella of the church. And I think definitely, to a large degree, you can because the materials are available. You can either buy the books, you can find them on the internet, you can get materials on eBay, and you can study these things by yourself. Study tech is available. You, 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 know, you don't need a supervisor standing over you to, to, to make sure that you understand what you're reading. I mean, if you're interested in Scientology, you should just read and study Scientology. The, the tech vols are available. Um, the OEC vols are available. People can study this material with, either with, by themselves, they can study it with friends, they can study it with a group. And the material can be learned. E-meters are available, and there's really there's no stops on uh, learning the subject and then applying it. There's there's no there's no legal restrictions, there's no commercial uh, barriers really. This stuff is on the internet. So uh, I personally would like to see Scientology being applied as widely as possible and as free a manner as possible. You know, some people would rather sell one hour of auditing for a million dollars. I'd rather sell a million hours of auditing for one dollar an hour. Same amount of money, but uh, the amount of case gain from people would be drastically higher. Okay, thank you.